please. Um, this is a rather unusual set. Um, that is to say, like every other set at Whitley Bay. Um, but this one is unusual because instead of, um, instead of gazing at musicians with their heads buried in sheet music, um, you'll be able to look to your right, and our left, and see the dances that these pieces of music originally accompanied, demonstrated for you by Bridget Calcerata and various partners. <laughs> First off is Jonathan Hogg. Uh, so welcome to your first dance lesson. Uh, we would like to present a short history and demonstration of five common social dances of the 19 teens and 20s. Uh, many thanks to Maestro Martin Wheatley for his interest in historic dance and for making this set possible. Well, one thing to note about all these dances that, is that they were very simple. Anyone could do them and so everyone did. If you walked into this room, you can one step. The one step appeared around 1911 and is simply walking to the beat of the music with a partner. Like jazz, it allows a lot of room for improvisation and is the perfect dance for fast tempos, as you will see. And the first piece is uh, Trim Moutard, which uh, wrongly translates as too much mustard. <laughs> <laughs> On the sheet music. Written by an uh, Englishman, Cecil Macklin, and this version is taken um, from the Imperial Symphony Orchestra recording, unusually conducted by, for that time, by a female conductor, uh, Lillian Bryant. So here we go with Too Much Muscle. One, two, two, Um, and as you'll see, that's, that's 
That's a great dance for fast music. So when you uh, buy and download your uh, Louisiana Five uh, CD, you can practice the one step to that. Um, and we move on. Uh, James Reese Europe credits W.C. Handy's Memphis Blues and the slowing down of the music as the impetus for the development of the foxtrot. <laughs> At a slower tempo, the one step seems to drag and the double time too fast. So the foxtrot combined the two using both slow and quick steps. And so to demonstrate how simple these dances are to learn, I recruited a musician. So, I'd like to introduce Mr. Nick Ball for his dancing debut. And for, uh, for Nick to make his dancing debut, too, we have uh, the Memphis Blues, credit to W.C. Handy, and this recording uh, is, is that of the Victor military band, who in fact were not military, they did, uh, but uh, they just wore military hats for these sessions. Uh, no, no. <laughs> in the comb, he was practicing the foxtrot, so. <laughs> um, or, uh, the tango was another craze of the ragtime and jazz eras and appeared around 1912. It became wildly popular after Rudolph Valentino's 1921 performance in the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. <laughs> Sorry, it's hard to read and talk. <laughs> Early social tango was basically an embellished one-step, but with attitude. And who better to demonstrate attitude than David Hornablow dancing to La Belle Creole in 2019. This is 
to the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> the, the tango that uh, David and, and the British are going to dance to is called La Belle Creole, an unusually an English composed tango from that time, which uh, are pretty thin on the ground. <laughs> from a recording by the uh, Mayfair Dance Orchestra, which was the band that preceded the famous new Mayfair Dance Orchestra. One, one, two, three, song is one of the fun runs. Uh, this is called The Baltimore. Everyone of course knows the Baltimore record. Uh, not many people know the dance. And in fact the lyrics of the song, if I remember this correctly, Mike Davis will probably correct me. There's a dance gossip like Black Boston called Baltimore. Is that correct? Probably. Probably not. Uh, 
Excellent. Thank you very much. So, um, Bridget is going to dance this uh, this fun dance with, uh, of course, the multi-talented Andy Shum. Uh, <laughs> And it's from Wisconsin, but of course not in the same uh, country as Baltimore. County of the Baltimore. I can't read this note. Anyway, we'll let them do it. And if you listen to this version of the Duck of Baltimore, it has what we call an Andy Shum ending. Yeah. <laughs> We're playing from a stock um, from the late 20s, and that's what it says. It's on the front of you, Andy Shum. So here we go with the Baltimore. One, two, as a record collector, and I'm sure Steve Padgett will attest to this, every time a copy of the Charleston comes up on eBay, for whatever reason, if it has the word Charleston in the title, people pay a lot of money for it, which is rather frustrating. Um, so this record appeared in 19... <laughs> Sorry, we're just embellishing this. So this appeared in 1923, it, was a take, it took the decade by storm. It was, of course, notable 
between the first dance that one could do solo, it was also the first dance where it's perfectly acceptable to wiggle around like a noodle and seemingly set the tone for dances of the future. The Charleston is a simple step touch, step foot, touch forward and back, and uses both the two and four beats of the music. Uh, incidentally, for this part, uh, we would appreciate any audience participation. Uh, we've been learning this and sort of making the odd mistake, making several mistakes. So audience partici participation may mask those mistakes. <laughs> incidentally, here we go with a 1925 version of the jig walk. Thank you. Um, Do quick, dance. quick name check before we go. Morton Gunnar Larson, Emma Fisk, Richard Exel, Stefan Giolo, Lars Frank, Duke Heitger, Mike Davis, Alastair Allen, Phil Rutherford, Richard Pipe, guest appearance on the Glockenspiel from Josh Duffy, <laughs> on the dance floor, Jonathan Holmes, Nicholas Ball, David Hornyblow, Andy Shum, and Bridget Calzaretta.